Why are stars hot? No, it is not fusion. Hello and welcome to the discourse. Stars are the most exotic bodies of our material universe. The natural stars are simple giant balls of hot gas, mostly hydrogen with some helium and small amounts of other elements. Every star has its own life cycle, ranging from a few million to trillions of years, and its properties change as it ages. Stars are significant for us. Without sun, we cannot expect any life on Earth. Our star not only offers sunlight, it is the major source of all the energy we use on Earth. The sun offers all this energy by its temperature. Calculations suggest that the temperature at the sun's surface is about 5600 Celsius. The temperature rises from the surface of the sun inward towards the sweltering center of the sun where it reaches about 15 million Celsius. The sun is a yellow dwarf, a medium-sized small star. Other similar stars are Alpha Centauri, Tau Ceti, and 51 Pegasi. However, some other stars are really big. Uy Scuti is a red supergiant star. It is 1708 times wider than our sun with a radius of 1.2 billion km. The temperature at the core of a red supergiant star is expected to be in the range of 100 million Celsius. Stephenson 2 DFK1 is a bigger red hypergiant star and the temperature at at its core obviously is expected to be more than that of Uy Scuti. So the question arises why are these stars so hot what makes them hot and why is the temperature of the core of uy scuti more than that of our own sun we all know that stars are the factories of fusion hydrogen gas is being fused to produce helium and helium gas in turn is being fused to produce heavier elements fusion does release a lot of energy and thus causes high temperatures so are these stars hot because of the nuclear fusion going through in their core that may not be the correct answer well it is a wrong guess stars are not hot because of fusion rather stars can perform nuclear fusion because they are hot nuclear fusion is a complex process that requires quantum tunneling quantum tunneling or barrier penetration is an essential step for nuclear fusion Nuclear fusion simply means that the nucleus of two simple hydrogen atoms fused together to produce a heavier complex nucleus of helium. In the process, some mass is lost and converted to a huge amount of energy and that energy gives rise to high temperatures. However, the nucleus of an atom is positively charged and the nuclei of various atoms strongly repel each other through electromagnetic forces. This produces a potential barrier. the nuclei of atoms are rep- repelling each other while fusion requires them to come close and become one to achieve this those nuclei of atoms are required to penetrate the barrier for that they require extremely high energy that is high temperature thus a ball of gas can become a star only if it is already has such a high temperature at which quantum tunneling is possible because only then nuclear fusion will be possible thus stars are not hot because of fusion rather stars can perform nuclear fusion because they are hot so why are they hot to understand this we must first understand what is heat or what is temperature temperature is the average kinetic energy of randomly moving particles molecules or atoms of a mixture it is a measure of the movement of molecules which affects the kinetic energy of the molecules most molecules have at least 3 degrees of freedom meaning they can move in at least 3 different ways in other words they can travel they can rotate and they can vibrate however the rotational or vibrational movement does not affect the kinetic energy a high temperature means the particles smash into each other at much higher speeds to understand why or how a star like our sun is hot let us imagine a giant cloud of gas mostly hydrogen initially a huge cloud of gas is floating in space this cloud of gas mostly hydrogen is too far from any other effective mass that is there is no giant star waiting to explode in in a supernova and offer viable conditions to ignite the fusion reaction 
within this lonely cloud of a gas. To self-illuminate, the cloud needs energy, a lot of energy. Each particle of the cloud has some gravitational energy or potential energy that can be roughly given by the formula Eg is equal to minus G capital M into smaller m upon R where small m is the mass of a single particle of the gas cloud while m, the capital M, is the total mass of the, that cloud. The energy of each particle is inversely proportional to R which is the distance of that particle from the barycenter or the center of the mass of that cloud. Thus, as the cloud shrinks under its own gravitation, R decreases and that potentially increases the value of Eg. However, this energy has a negative sign. This means that as the particle reaches nearer to the barycenter due to the shrinking of the cloud, its gravitational energy or potential energy is decreasing. Where does that potential energy go? It converts into the kinetic energy of that particle. All the particles of the cloud begin to move faster and faster as they fall toward the center of the cloud. As the particles come very close, they begin to collide with each other at a higher frequency, yet these particles do not have enough energy to break the barrier and fuse together. If the total mass of the cloud is not enough, the gravitational energy of the particles will also be limited which will in turn limit the kinetic energy. As they collide frequently, they begin to lose kinetic energy which in turn changes into gravitational energy or potential energy and the cloud begins to expand again. The gravitational pull again forces the particles to come closer and the cloud begins to shrink again. At some point, the particles colliding with each other tend to lose their orientation and be begin moving randomly. As the cloud shrinks more, more particles collide with these randomly moving particles and gradually the energy being lost due to the shrinking of the cloud begins changing into randomly oriented motion and makes the cloud hot, hotter and hotter. Its temperature soars up. As the giant cloud of gas contracts or shrinks, the particles convert their gravitational motion into random motion. This random motion heats up the cloud of gas. As the temperature increases, the pressure also increases which, allows, which slows down the process of contraction. Temperature is the kinetic energy associated with the random motion of particles in a body. Pressure is the force exerted due to this motion. It again is a self-governing process. As the cloud becomes hotter, its rate of shrinking continues to decrease and at some point, it begins to expand and temperature begins to go down. However, this situation of continuous shrinking and expansion of the cloud is in the case of when the total mass of the cloud is not enough. If the cloud is really giant, then the particles of the cloud will have much more gravitational energy to be converted to kinetic energy which will result in random motion in turn and the cloud will become hotter. As the cloud becomes hotter, the pressure exerted by the particles during collision also increases. Also, the particles have maximum random kinetic energy when they are closer to the center of mass that is at the core of the cloud. At some point, the core of the cloud where the pressure and temperature are the greatest finally reaches the critical temperature required to begin nuclear fusion. Quantum tunneling becomes a potential possibility. Quantum tunneling ignites the fusion and the cloud turns into a star. So, it is clear that the temperature of a gas cloud is dependent on the total mass of the cloud, its effective radius and the composition of the cloud. In the case of this hypothetical cloud, most of the particles of the cloud are hydrogen. Jupiter is the biggest gas giant in our solar system and the estimated temperature at the core of Jupiter is around 24,700 degrees centigrade. Jupiter attains this high temperature at its core because it has an internal source of heat that allows Jupiter to radiate about twice as much energy as it receives from the Sun. Even the temperature at the core of our Earth is around 5200 degrees Celsius which is far above the melting point of iron. Another gas giant of the solar system is Saturn. Saturn's interior is hot. At the core, the temperature is at least 8316 degrees Celsius. That's hotter than the surface of the sun. 
Jupiter is mainly made of hydrogen and helium. It is not a star, but it is hot. It is not hot enough to ignite nuclear fusion because it doesn't have enough mass. The cloud that made our sun had enough mass to in initiate nuclear fusion and hence the core of the sun achieved a much higher temperature than Jupiter could at its core. Thus, any cloud of a gas achieves hotness or higher temperature because of gravitational contraction. If the cloud has enough mass, it turns into a star, otherwise it remains a hot gas giant. If a cloud has too much mass, it turns into a red supergiant like Uy Scuti and the temperature of its core becomes much more than our sun. If the cloud has much more mass, it becomes red hypergiant like Stephenson 2 DFK1 and its temperature at the core becomes much more than that of Uy Scuti. A star is hot because of gravitational contraction which makes nuclear fusion possible. Once fusion begins, mass converts into energy further increasing the temperature. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss science, physics, technology and cosmology. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.